Today, we are going to talk about complications in the PACU, and this is going to be a new series. I hope that you find it valuable and applicable to your practice, so let's begin. One complication I would like to talk about is laryngeal spasms. Thankfully, it's not a common complication, although uh, in our pediatric patient population, that is where you're going to see it the most. So it's probably one of the most feared complications in the PACU by a PACU nurse because um, it's an emergent situation that either requires a rapid intubation or some really patient, great, excellent nursing care to um, work with your kiddos, getting them through this process and with their family too. A laryngospasm. Well, it is an autonomic reflex closure of the vocal cords. It can be either a partial closure or a complete closure of the goddess. You will know when somebody has a laryngospasm because you will hear that sound. It's a high pitch inspiratory strider. And I will do my best to make that sound. Kids do it a higher pitch than me, but it's like, that's, that's probably about it. If you hear that in your PACU, it is an emergency and you need to get over to that bedside and assist um, the nurse who's with that patient. You need to call anesthesia and have them en route so that they can support you. Causes of laryngospasms. When the vocal cords, if they get secretions, or blood on them, they get very irritated. That can cause a laryngospasm. Patients who have a history of a reactive airway can cause a laryngospasms. Um, patients who come from a household of smokers are more prone to laryngospasms. Recent upper respiratory infection patients are prone to laryngospasms. And then it accounts for about 23% of all respiratory emergencies in the PACU is related to a laryngospasm, and it is a respiratory emergency. You have a higher incidence with your tonsillectomies because of the bleeding and all the secretions. Also on dental cases, you will see it. And I have to say, all of my laryngospasm cases have been in pediatrics, either tonsillectomies, dental procedure, traumatic intubation. A laryngospasm, when you hear that sound, <laughs> You'll, you'll see the notch go in, call for help um, first off, and then listen quickly. And you're doing this all pretty much at the same time. And then if they are not moving air, the very first thing you can do is a Larson maneuver. And if you are not familiar with the Larson maneuver, I have a link below um, where you can watch a quick three minute YouTube video on how to do a Larson maneuver. But pretty much what it is, is there is a reflex point behind the ear. What you're going to do is you're gonna apply pressure with your middle finger, and then with your thumb, you're going to push the jaw, the mandible up and out in a 90 degree. So you're immediately opening up that airway. So you're gonna be on both sides, middle fingers pressing on the back, right behind the pinna, there is the pressure point and you're actually putting pressure on the vagal nerve, which then should open up the vocal cords. And so what you're gonna be doing is, is something like this. I have seen this done with pediatrics and kids will um, want to, if they're awake um, and they're air hungry, they will naturally tripod. And so you can just, you can hold them up like this and getting their airway open. And then you wanna get your Ambu bag out and you wanna give positive pressure ventilation with your Ambu bag to give that air pressurized to open up those vocal cords so that you can push the air past um, the closed cords to ventilate the patient. Again, if it is an obstructive laryngospasm, then anesthesia hopefully is now at your bedside or they never left your bedside. Just plan to, for rapid intubation if they're obstructive and anesthesia is planning for it as well. So you're just gonna be assisting them. If it is unobstructive, let's say you hear it. And they're getting air down there. 
but they're working and they are, you know, they, they've got that retraction, but they're getting air down. What you want to do is go ahead and get racemic epi out of your Pixis and put it in a nebulizer with some saline. Just want to support the child, stay calm, give them that racemic epi treatment, and that should help open up those cords. I have seen it work within 15 minutes and I have seen complete resolution in 45 to 60 minutes. If it's untreated, uh, if you don't identify it immediately, it's, it can lead to hypoxia, um, hypercarbia, because they've got CO2 building up, post-obstructive pulmonary edema, which again is another emergency, and, uh, and then ultimately to respiratory arrest. So this does account for a significant amount of respiratory arrests in our pediatric patient population. So you need to know how to manage it and act immediately. Let's just review. So obstructive laryngospasms, um, immediately you're calling for help. Uh, your child is going, <gasps> and they are not moving air down to the lower airways. You're getting your ambu bag out. Do that Larson maneuver to try to open up vocal cords and just hold pressure there a few seconds, like 15 to 30 seconds, see how they respond to it. And while somebody is grabbing your ambu bag and beginning that positive pressure ventilation with 100% FiO2, and somebody else is getting your rapid intubation box and you, you should have your peds crash cart right next to your pediatric patient. If it is obstructive, I plan on a rapid intubation, uh, assisting anesthesia. If you have unobstructive laryngospasms, then you are gonna just support that airway. You're gonna be watching your child, making sure that they don't get fatigued, making sure that it doesn't turn into an obstruction. Uh, you're gonna be doing a racemic epi neb. Again, kids will naturally tripod, so you will just want to support them, keep them safe. If your parent is not there, I would get your parent so that they can help calm your, your child, just being calm. And I tell you the power of distraction during these moments if your child will tolerate it if it escalates them then don't even go there but if you can throw on a youtube cartoon on your phone let me tell you it, it can work miracles to distract them away from their respiratory challenge at the moment um, and it, it can work very well I have seen laryngospasms resolve in 15 minutes to 45 minutes and complete resolution in that 45 to 60 minute window. You do wanna watch for reoccurrence of the laryngospasms once the racemic epi has worn off. And then also plan for your patient to possibly be admitted for an overnight extended recovery for observation. I hope this eases your fear on how to manage a laryngospasm. Um, there are some references here. You can uh, read up more about laryngospasms and, and check out that YouTube video on the Larson Maneuver uh, for treating laryngospasms. I hope that I gave you some value added for your practice. If you feel like I did, then please like PACU Nursing Minutes, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future episode releases. And as always, thank you for tuning in to PACU Nursing Minutes.